Allison here at the National First Ladies Library in Canton, Ohio. You might have noticed that I have my baseball uniform on today and I am ready to play baseball with you. In fact, today we're going to learn a little bit more about women in baseball. And I bet you've heard that song. If you've been to a professional baseball game, you've heard Take Me Out to the Ball Game, right? Usually during the seventh inning stretch, you get up, stretch your arms, legs, sing the song, maybe you go get a hot dog. But did you know that that song has connections to the suffrage movement? That's right. There are extra verses to that song about a woman named Katie Casey. And today, we're gonna learn a little bit about the song and who the woman behind the song was. So, take me out to the ball game. It starts like this. Katie Casey was baseball mad, had the fever and had it bad, just to root for the hometown crew. Every sow, Katie blew. On a Saturday, her young beau called to see if she'd like to go, to see a show, but Miss Katie said no. I'll tell you what we can do. What does she want to do? She wants to go to a baseball game. So this is a pretty progressive lady, right? She's pretty out there. She's pretty cool. She wants to go to a baseball game. And that's the chorus we all know. Take me out to the ball game. Take me out to the crowd. Buy me some peanuts and cracker jacks. I don't care. I never get back. Let me root, root, root for the home team. If they don't win, it's a shame. For it's one, two, three strikes you're out at the old ball game, right? Next though, there's actually another verse. Katie Casey saw all the games, knew the players by their full names, told the umpire he was wrong, all along good and strong. When the score was just two to two, Katie Casey knew what to do. Just to cheer up the boys she knew, she made the gang sing this song and then you repeat, take me out to the ball game. So that song was written around 1908 by a guy who was an actor. His name was Jack Norworth. And he was a vaudeville performer who had actually never been to a baseball game in his life. But he was riding the elevated subway and he saw a big sign that said, baseball game today. And he thought, what a great thing to write a song about. It could be really popular because baseball at the time was huge. So he wrote that song and we think that that song is about a woman that he was in love with whose name was Trixie Friganza. And she was also a vaudeville actress and she was actually a suffragist too. So suffragists believed that women should have the right to vote and they marched in the streets and they paraded and they spoke out for it. So here is a photo of Trixie. And she attended all sorts of rallies and gave speeches. Uh, she said, quote, I do not believe any man, at least no man I know, is better fitted to form a political opinion than I am. So we think that Katie Casey might have actually been Trixie. And one of the reasons we know that is when the sheet music to take me up to the ball game came out, there's actually a picture of Trixie on the sheet music. So take me out to the ball game, actually inspired by a suffragist. Pretty cool, right? So I brought this book with me today that I would love to read to you. It's called Players and Pigtails. It's by Shauna Corey, and it's illustrated by Rebecca Gibbon. So we're gonna fast forward from 1908 to World War II. So our author today, Shana Corey, she was inspired by Take Me Out to the Ball Game to create this character. And her name, guess what it was? Katie Casey. So this is a story about what happened in World War II when all the professional male baseball players went to fight in the war. And the president at the time thought baseball really needed to happen. It really needed to happen so it could keep up morale. Um, they thought it would be something extremely patriotic and good for the country. So what did they do? They recruited women to play baseball. So this character, this Katie Casey is actually a made up character, 
but this is her story. Katie Casey wasn't good at being a girl. At least not the kind of girl everyone thought she should be. Her clothing was crumpled, her knitting was knotted, her dancing was a disaster. And no matter how hard she tried, her heart just wasn't in home ec. This is home economics class where you bake things and you sew by there. But there was one thing Katie was good at, baseball. Katie could catch any ball with any mitt with her eyes closed. She could hit any ball with any bat with one hand behind her back. She preferred sliding to sewing, batting to baking, and home runs to homecoming. Her parents were not at all pleased. Why not piano or painting, they pleaded. What good is baseball to a girl? But Katie wouldn't be swayed. She walked baseball. She talked baseball. She even dreamed baseball. You can see her room filled with all sorts of pennants for baseball teams. She went to the ballpark every chance she got. She loved hot dogs and peanuts. She loved shouting and singing. Sounds like the woman in our song, right? But most of all, she loved watching the professional players play ball. Sometimes she even imagined she was one of them. So here she is out in the stands with her family. Every spring she showed up for Fairfield High team tryouts. And every spring she was turned away without even getting a try. Better stick to ballet, the boy said. What good is baseball to a girl? But baseball was starting to change. America was at war. More and more of the country's boys, including professional baseball players, were going off to fight. The fields were almost empty and the fans were getting frantic. Even President Roosevelt was worried. What was a country without a national pastime? No one wanted to find out. Finally, Philip Wrigley, the owner of the Chicago Cubs, had an idea. If women can work in factories and even join the army, he said, why can't they play ball? Outrageous, everyone said. Girls playing baseball? No one will pay to see girls play baseball. But Mr. Wrigley didn't listen. He sent out 30 scouts to find players for his league, the first and only girls professional baseball league. The scouts searched high and low, near and far, and to be perfectly frank, they were flabbergasted at what they found. What do you think they found? Let's find out. All over the country, girls were playing ball, and they were playing just as good as boys. Washington, Texas, California, Florida, New York, Louisiana. One thing we'll learn is that this league was actually segregated. So only white women played in this league. One of them was Katie Casey. Say sir, said a scout when she saw her curveball. How'd you like to go to Chicago to try out for a real team? Would she? Katie didn't have to think twice. She went straight home and packed her bags, kissed her parents goodbye, and boarded the very next train. When she got to Wrigley Field, she broke into a grin. There were hundreds of girls. There were farm girls and city girls, tall girls and short girls, girls from far away, girls from down the block. But no matter what they looked like or where they came from, they all had one thing in common. They all loved baseball. Kitty had never felt so at home. Sign her up, said the coach of the Kenosha Comets when he saw her swing. The All-American Girls Professional Baseball League was on the way. Everyone was curious about the strange happenings at Wrigley Field. Unheard of, said one citizen. Girls don't like sports. It's certainly not ladylike, another agreed. What good is baseball?
football to a girl, blared the newspaper headlines. The league managers heard the talk and their stomachs started to twitch. They knew their girls had to be ready to play ball, but maybe the country wasn't quite ready for their girls. The managers decided to launch an emergency campaign to show the country just how ladylike baseball could be. First, they designed special uniforms for the girls to wear. Dresses, said Katie, but she shrugged and put one on. After all, at least she was going to play ball. Then the manager signed the teams up for charm school. Pinkies out, girls. Posture, cried the teacher. Think swans. Finally, it was time for the big test. The girls were graceful. They were elegant. They were perfectly charming, and they were ready to play ball. On opening day, 16 swan-like players emerged from each locker room onto the field, but something wasn't right. Katie heard a giggling in the stands. It grew louder and louder. Careful, you might break a nail, girls, someone shouted. Players in pigtails, roared the crowd. Is this a ballpark or a ballroom? Everyone laughed themselves silly. The All-American Girl Professional Baseball League started to play, and they played by far the best baseball any of them have ever played. By the bottom of the ninth, the score was Rockford Peaches 9, Kenosha Comet 6. The bases were loaded, and Katie Casey was at bat for the Comets. Here they are, playing on the field. She stepped up to the plate and looked out at the stands. She'd been waiting her whole life for this. The pitcher threw the ball and Katie swung. Crack! The baseball sailed up into the air. Katie took off running. It's a grand slam home run, shouted the announcer. The crowd went wild and Katie cheered right along with them because for once, no one was asking what good baseball was to a girl. They were all too busy talking about how good girls were for baseball. So the baseball league stuck around for a while until the war ended and Major League Baseball started to pick back up. But you may have seen the movie, A League of Their Own, which actually commemorates these women. So they were really, really amazing and great at baseball. So there are all sorts of people that are good at sports. And a lot of our history includes women and all sorts of other people even if we didn't know it. So the next time you sing the song, take me out to the ball game, remember our friend Katie Casey and our friend Trixie, the suffragist. So women now have the power to vote and they have the power to play any sport that they like and be super good at it too. So we'll see you at the next inning. Thanks guys.